In this video, we're going to talk about creating a belt and pulley assembly inside of a SOLIDWORKS sketch block. We have belt and pulley part file open, and we're going to take a look at sketch one. You'll notice inside sketch one that there are two blocks. We have block one and block two. Both of these blocks have dimensions to them. The larger pulley has a five inch dimension that's in black. This is telling us that we are actually driving the dimension between this pulley and the origin. There's also going to be a horizontal relation there. The dimension on the right is actually gray. That's telling me that this is a driven dimension, which means that we can move this pulley out in space. Inside SOLIDWORKS, when you're creating these sketch blocks, all you need to do is have the appropriate entities on the screen. So for instance, we have two circles. So once I have that, I can select belt and chain and select both of these as members of our belt assembly. You'll notice that as soon as we select at least two, that we actually have a yellow preview on the screen. Under the properties section, we have a driving option. So we can actually drive the dimension that this right hand pulley is based on the common length of the belt. So for instance, if we knew we were using a 35 inch belt, then it's gonna move this pulley out to the right once we create this. We have two options below this. We have use belt thickness, in which we can tell it how thick our belt is, and it's gonna modify the location of that path. This is important information if you're gonna use this to create a SOLIDWORKS solid part. We also have the engage belt option. Now this is an important option here. This is gonna create friction between the belt and the pulleys. That allows SOLIDWORKS to figure out the ratio between this pulley and this pulley. That way when you move one, the other is gonna move at the appropriate ratio. So let's okay that and create it. And you'll notice that this right hand pulley was moved out to 5.38 inches. Because we use that engage belt option, we can now rotate these around and we can look at the difference between them. One other thing SOLIDWORKS allows us to do, let's go ahead and delete that belt and let's create some more sketch entities. So I'm gonna draw a circle up here. And again, I'm gonna draw a line as a reference for where it's rotating. You can also draw a line from this unit. And we're gonna create two sketch blocks here. So the first is gonna be the circle on that center line. And the next is gonna be this other line that we created. So now I'm gonna move these around. I'm gonna fix the upper left hand point. That allows us to rotate and float this point out in space. So let's go ahead and create a belt assembly from this. So now we can select our members. And let's select this third member. And you'll notice that we can choose the location of the belt on this pulley. We can also use a belt thickness if we want. In this case, I'm gonna not use a belt thickness. And we can also drive that because the right hand pulley is floating and this pulley is floating as well. So let's go ahead and hit OK and take a look at what we've created. And we can still rotate everything around because we use that engage belt option. But one thing you'll notice that's different about this is our path is now blue instead of being black. That means that the path is underdefined. The reason it's underdefined is because we actually have a pulley that can float. Now we want to go ahead and fix this right hand point and take a look at this tensioner pulley that we've created. So you can see this is a good way to create the geometry that's needed to tension a belt properly. So you can instantly know how long your tensioner arm needs to be and where that pulley needs to be located to properly engage the rest of the pulleys in your assembly. And this isn't limited to one, two, or three instances. We can create a very complicated assembly and create all the pulleys needed based on that. Let's take a look at another file. So based on our original sketch block, I created solid geometry here. We have a belt and two pulleys that were created based on those original sketch blocks. So you can see here we have an original sketch and the blocks and the engage belt that was created. So let's go ahead and edit that sketch and modify this left hand block. So let's say instead of four inches, this pulley actually was supposed to be six inches. Exit the block, our path is gonna update, we exit the sketch and our pulley is now larger as well as our belt. Now this isn't as easy as I made it seem because you do need to understand how things are changing and how things are updating. For instance, there's a pulley plane that was created that is located at the center of our pulley and located based on our path. Again, there's a pulley plane for the second pulley as well. And then these revolves and so on are dimensioned and defined based on some of the relations between the pulley path and so on. But I just want you to note that you can create these complicated assemblies based on those sketch blocks and they can be easily updated and changed. 
So this is a great way for you to use sketch blocks when you're creating these belts and even chain and sprocket assemblies by using the references and these simple sketch blocks to create this motion to your advantage. That concludes the video on creating a belt and pulley assembly with sketch blocks.